the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Woo. You work for me. And that was when I got when I got to Warner Robinson, one of the like the whole script that when I came to Warner Robinson. Which is kind of unique because that's when I met Lee too. And uh but that was when I think the relationship began to really unravel in, 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 in the configuration that it is found that it is at cur currently because I realized my position in Christ wasn't the boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He wasn't the Mac machine, he wasn't the genie, he wasn't somebody who just called out the bottle. But eventually I realized that my job was to get make sure his will got done. And uh, that's been a process. After coming to that realization, now I'm learning to listen to his voice and to follow it. You didn't come a you didn't come a, a, a elder. You know that six years you're talking about? Oh no. No man, no. I, I was I was way for a few. I was literally there. I mean I was drunk. And then people yeah. in the church were always drunk. Right. But the people in the church were the ones that came and got me and brought me back to church. Though. Like I said, uh, I, I was so bad, I got embarrassed. I was too embarrassed to go back to the church. So the pastor's wife and a young lady, and a lady, uh, Mary Elder, I think it Mary Elder, her husband. And I used to go out in the tree during the breaks of choir practice and smoke. We were both drunk. He ended up dying in a boating accident in Santee. And uh, I ended up surviving, uh, but we were both uh, messed up. But they didn't discriminate in that sense. They, mm -hmm. you had a need, and obviously they made sure you stay close to the fire. Now the husband, Sammy Smith, Sammy Smith was like, yeah, he, he was got. Uh, I can't say that he was like Pastor Lee, but <laughs> <laughs> he had that same straight edge kind of attitude toward God. It wasn't no tolerance for anything that was that was, you know, apparently not lining up with the word, right? Right. But he, he did he preached on alcoholism, I think, every Sunday, as I can remember, for like over a year looked like. I don't know. <laughs> but by the time I got to live out of town here, man. And uh but it was it was something that he continued to address, which kind of odd because his wife was the one that came and got me from the house and brought me back to the church. When I got there, it was like he was the one with the belt beat me every day <laughs> in church. But eventually, on November 2nd, 1985, I got delivered. Which was really weird because on October of that same year, me and some of my friends had thrown a party. Uh, it was a Halloween party, the last Halloween party that I did. And it, it had all the dancing girls and everything. Now I went from being a total, a total drunk on, the, on October 31st. They've been totally good on the third, on the second of second November, and and I that's, guess I guess Bitch was saying is, day. I guess Bitch was saying is, was he a false convert, or or I, I don't think I don't think it was a false convert. I just didn't understand what conversion was. It's all a matter of how the doctor is preaching. Yeah, that's what Paul was concerned. Did that somebody preach the word of God? Don't go with it. This doctrine is intended to address the, the Jesus said in John chapter 10, I have come that you might have life. Right. Yeah. Obviously, he's telling you that what you currently got ain't the life that God purposed for you to have. Right. I right. come to give you the kind of Above this life, the life from God that you were created to have. And if the person now, wants it, is intended, is intended to get you to see that you need that life. Right. And I'm saying, and I'm saying is that as we go out and minister to people, that there, there's a heart condition that has a lot of things to work on. And are we saying, and this is about a question, are we saying is, and I'll use the stronghold of, I'd rather use something other than homosexuality, but 
an adulterer. Yes. And, and, and are we saying is you can't come in to the body of Christ unless you stop? Or are we saying is that Christ will help you deliver you from adultery? inside the body Christ. Because you can't get, my understanding is you can't get right. If you can get right without Christ, then you don't need Christ. Yes, yes. The whole purpose of the gospel is to give you Christ. I, well, right. I'm saying this. So if they come in, I'm saying this, I'm saying, could I make a show? I'm clarifying for me and anybody listening. And that's why I was saying, even with the homosexual, I'm saying is if, if the, I'm trying to get the person to come in to the body of Christ so he can deliver you from no. these areas. No. You're trying to get him to come into the body of Christ. You see, you see, we, we've mixed up some things about this deliverance and all these things. Uh, salvation is the deliverance. Okay. But what about the area we're talking about? We're talking about the strongholds that people come in with i mean we we got I, and i'm talking not just homosexual talking about unforgiveness uh you got people who've been they've been hurt so bad by what people did to them they they still come to christ and say, i love you jesus but so I still let me ask you this question huh so let me ask you this question so are you telling me that you'd be willing to baptize an adulterer i'm willing for i will baptize anyone that confessed to jesus christ their personal lord and savior Without any evidence. The confession is what tell me. I don't know uh, what evidence for me to do. Are you, are you saying then that all I got to do is just say it with my mouth? I said that I go to Romans 10 out of 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man oh. believes into righteousness, with the mouth confession means salvation. Is so that what any obligation to authenticate the Lordship of Christ in your life? Well, I think you should be. And the point is, to me, is that Christ, if you're an alcoholic, if you're homosexual, if you're a liar, if you have unforgiveness, he's the one that can remove that from you. And I'm not, I'm, I don't think, I'm, I don't think we should be in a position to, to say, well, I, until he removes that from you, you, I'm not going to baptize you. Okay. Well, that's a very, I'm, I'm glad we, we had this discussion. I'm glad that came up. Can you so do that? What you mean is that all a person got to do is just say it. What? Well, at that point, well, the Roman 10 said, then confess with your mouth. Roman 316. Now, I'm You're saying that all a person got to do is say that I believe crime. I believe in crime. Is that well, so? If you look at the president of the Ethiopian eunuch in Philip, Philip didn't actually have time to observe that guy's behavior after that. He did. And but, I that's just one I, I don't have any I don't have any quarrels at all with that because I see in the text that sim that, that 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 Philip is being moved by the Spirit of God. And what about <laughs> even yeah. and wherever the Spirit of God is moving in the work of salvation, I never have any doubt right. about his efficacy. Well, and I, I'm always assured. That if he is working, you're gonna get the result God from. Well, whatever right. I'm saying, I think that way that's our part is allow God to do the work. That's not our decision. Like Cornelius' house, when when those guys, the Holy Spirit came in on those people, uh Peter said, What's stopping these people from getting baptized? What we don't know is what was their lifestyle prior to, and we don't know what the lifestyle was after. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Right. Because their lifestyle is recorded in scripture of how they live and conducting themselves after Peter preached that message to them. That's what the book of Acts is about. It starts tracking their living from the day that Peter preached to them. Cornelius' house? I don't know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in the book of Acts, where yeah. Peter preached to the Jews. And I have no reason to believe that what happened in Cornelius' house will be any different because Peter said the same Holy Ghost fell on them that fell on us yeah, well i agree with that part i guess the question we don't once again is if based on historical current and past trends this the body of christ has done some things well how, how did the church how did the jews live after peter preached to them well some of them actually still had issues. Oh, where, yeah, oh. where 
Bishop, you want us to go back and prove to his, his historical records? Because the, no, I'm the, just saying. I, 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 listen, I studied the story. I've gone through all of this. But I look at the church in Acts, starting on the day when Peter preached. And when those men were, were pricked in their heart by the Spirit of God, Peter didn't tell them to pray their prayer to me. They asked him. See, this is, this is all the stuff we got jacked up in the church. Nobody led them in a prayer of confession, a prayer of repentance. They asked Peter. The Spirit of God convicted them to the place what they wanted to know. They knew they needed to do something. They said, what shall we do? To be saved. Right. Peter said, repent. Right. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and, 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 and he goes on to explain to them that they need for baptism and that they will receive the Holy Ghost. Now, now, now the question, I guess, to keep that vein is based on that book of Acts and based on the letters in Revelation. See, like, it, it, see, you have, see here what you miss. We, we, we know in Peter's case, we know in Philip's case, we know in Peter's case with North Cornelius. We know in Philip's case with the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch. We know in Peter's case in, 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 in Acts chapter 2 that the Spirit of God is intimately at work in those situations. And what I'm asking you is, is that when somebody say that they believe in, in their heart that Jesus is Lord, how do you know that that was the result of the Spirit of God? It would have to be the Spirit that revealed it to you. Yeah, how would you, how would they, that's all I'm telling you. How do you know? But you said all they got to do is say it. What I'm saying is that, as far as I'm concerned, I can't tell what God did with and well, I'm was, telling I, you, I think the whole dangerous was, ground right there. The Holy, the Holy Spirit. We don't know what God, I don't know what God did with inside that person. I think that, I think, I think, I think, I, I think that, that, that we're push, that we're pushing back to is that the Holy Spirit is, is leading the guy in everything. He's actually directly God God and, and that's not, the only way we can know is just the Spirit of God tell us. And, and even an even example you gave when the person said, What was I do to be saved? Uh, the person who's responding to that is not they don't know what they what's going on in the end what happened of god on that situation that's why god has you there well what well, the point is then is so if the person comes with a sincere heart and said i want jesus christ my personal lord and savior that's not for me to say no but i think uh Pastor okay Taylor, so uh, hold on what i'm hearing is that what i'm hearing anyway i'm, I'm hearing the lord say i got you on this i'll reveal it to you and, and I think that for all of us, it's him working in us to let us know what the condition of the other person's heart and how we are respond. And I think that's that's a beautiful thing because we haven't done that in the past. I, I, I've looked at situations judging from what I observed. Hey, Vincent, hey, Vincent, hey, hey, we probably need to cover this next. We got one o'clock now, Vincent. I know it, right? And I got to go to speak. Hey, uh, I'm going to say to him. I'm going to say to him. You gotta understand what you're dealing with. You're talking about, you're talking about giving someone the impression that they may actually not be in something that you told them that they were in. I'm telling you the fact is that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if that person believe in their heart that God ran for the dead, where is it that you telling me I'm so, I'm, matter of fact, I don't think anybody could deny them Matter of fact, I think one of the scriptures said, who can deny these people baptism and receive the Holy Spirit? They made a decision. You, you, you know, but you know something, President? <laughs> there was a young lady that was following uh, Paul Rock going, these are the great men of God, these are the great men of God. Hourly, she looked like she was on their team, right? But then Paul turned around and rebuked her and, and, and cast the demon out because the Lord revealed something to him that wasn't obvious. And so I think, and I thank God for this moment that there is a there's an agent, the agent that's actually conducting the traffic and they're calling the cadence and it's, it's still the Holy Ghost and we gotta hear it. So we we're gotta hear it ourselves so we can really hear from it. Yeah, this would sound like we we there's some there's a there's a and the Holy Spirit is telling for everybody in that church. No, that, I'm that telling God, you God tell telling you. all we must know they're all saved. No, we can't I'm know I'm telling you that it was the gospel is being sold. It is being sold by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes, sir. And they yeah. come to you. Oh, and hold on. Hold on. He's using you to yeah. sow the gospel. I appreciate it. But the Bible said, well, you have an obligation. Go ahead. 
you have an obligation as the vessel through whom he is using to discern that the hearing and responding that's taking place is also of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You don't right. have an obligation for that. That's so right. it ain't just what they say with their mouth. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think that, I think the question of whether you can discern the sincerity of a person's heart, I think that'll be evident in itself. But in most cases, I have never seen anybody come and say, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to see, believe in Jesus Christ, my personal Lord and Savior. I have. I see the Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. I, but what you do? You tell them to send them away? No. What we have was a practice in our church that when you come down to the altar and you make that confession, we're going to take you back in the back. And we're going we to sit down and we're going to walk through the scriptures and we're going to find out exactly what you're talking about. Well, I mean, I had, a brother, I, had a, I had a president come down and tell me, he came down to the altar said, I came to rededicate my life. Yes, sir. I said, okay. So I went back with him, back with him. I said, okay. I said, so, so, you, so you you, came down today because the fear of God moved you to rededicate your life? He said, yeah. I said, okay, what were your relations were like with God before you walked away? He said, what do you mean? I said, you said rededicate. He says, yeah. I said, rededicate means that you already you, you already had a relationship with God, but you backslid and stuff happened. He said, no, I ain't never been saved. I said, well, how can you read that? How can you rededicate if you ain't never been saved? He said, well, I, th I thought that's what you were supposed to say. He said, I hear people when they come down here, they say they can't even rededicate their life. I thought that's what you were supposed to say. I said, no, rededication has a meaning. And you got all kinds of people coming down for all kinds of reasons who've been told all kinds of stuff. You can't just go on what they say. Hey, hey, Bishop, hey, Bishop. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they want about Romans 10 out of 10. Well, at least, at, least, at least when I, at least when I have talked to people, I like to say this said is that the, if you confess your mouth to Lord Jesus and believe in God has raised him from the dead, I say that same power, if you believe that same power that can raise you from the dead, that's the same power that can save you and change you and deliver you from your things. You know, that's a, that's a conversation that you give to let them understand the power of God. It can do if you can believe in this power. If you can believe that God raised you from the dead. Then you know you can believe God can save you. You know God can change you. You know God can heal you. You just need to understand that you believe in that power. And and if they somebody come and say that, and matter of fact, most cases that's what you minister to yourself. You, you when you're ministering, you you're going through that 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 gamut of understanding what you're asking and what you're receiving. Yes, I understand that.